time. So, all right, guys, let's talk about uh, some of the top investor mistakes um, that, that we've seen uh, investors make over the years. And some of these are mistakes that we've made over the years. I've got about, oh, I've got a disclaimer first. Um, I'm not an attorney, CPA, or financial planner. I did disclose to you guys that I am a licensed realtor and broker in the great state of Texas, license number 0518223. Uh, I have a six-year-old at home that I'm planning on uh, hanging out with uh, for a long time, putting through private school, putting through college. My plans for my personal financial life may be different than your plans for your uh, personal financial life. So be sure to get with a great attorney a great CPA, a great financial planner, and make sure that they review all the things that you're doing as a real estate investor to make sure that you get this right. So um, guys, this is super tiny font. Um, so I'm, I'm probably not gonna be able to get through all of these different categories of mistakes, but guys, there are a lot of categories of mistakes here. And when I first put this uh, presentation together when the market uh, had a downturn, um, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna make this, you know, it's gonna be a couple slides in this presentation. And, and uh, um, you know, and then I was like, oh no, this is not a couple of slides, this is like a couple hundred mistakes and it falls into uh, several different categories of mistakes that, that we've seen investors make and that, like I said, we've made over time as well. Um, um, I'm gonna break it down into these groupings and we'll get through as much as we can tonight. But the first thing that I wanna talk about is marketing. What did Phil tell you was the most important thing that you need to do as a real estate investor? Marketing, right? In fact, I think he, I think he, I think he called it marketing, 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 yeah? Like that's what you guys are doing. A lot of real estate investors think, well, I'm a real estate investor, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be swinging a hammer, right? I'm gonna be fixing houses, I'm gonna be flipping houses. How many of you guys, like that's what I was thinking when I was gonna come in here, fixing houses, flipping houses. Okay, two. Uh, some of you others, what were you thinking? You're shaking your head pretty violently, like, you know, so, so what were you thinking as a, you were gonna do as a real estate investor? Um, shop. shop. Shop around. Okay, okay, all right. So, um, um, it's marketing, it's, it's all about marketing. Um, you know, uh, people get into this business or want to get into this business and think, well, these deals are just going to come to me, right? Or I'm gonna, I'm just gonna find these deals that are gonna be easy to find, not knowing, as Elaine said, like, these deals are getting really hard to find right now, yeah? And you guys need to be finding some different strategies to market to be able to get, get these done. Um, and I'll tell you, guys, if you are a real estate, how many of you are active, have an active marketing campaign going right now? Raise your hand. I'm actively sending out letters, I'm actively putting out bandit signs, I'm actively doing some type of marketing. Okay, that's less than 20%. So here's what I need to tell you guys as a real estate investor because only about 20% of you were saying that you are actively, you actively have a marketing campaign going. So for the rest of you, and, and just like throw out, throw out to me like, well this is how I think I'm gonna get deals. Like how do you think you're gonna get deals if you're not marketing? Like what, 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 what are you thinking? For those of you who said I'm not marketing, how did you think you're gonna get deals? Wholesalers. Okay, what else? Meetups. What? Meetups. Meetups, okay, other investors, yeah, so wholesalers. It's, the, only, the answer is wholesalers, right? So you're gonna get your deals from a wholesaler. So what I tell people, what I tell investors is, if you are a real investor, if you are an active real estate investor, meaning you're actively buying and selling properties, whether you are doing your own marketing or not, you are paying for your own marketing, you're just paying someone else to do that marketing for you. And what kind of a fee are you paying that, 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 that wholesaler? The last wholesaler you paid was, you paid him $16,500? Okay, what else, what, what's a typical wholesale fee? 5,000, yeah, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. The most that I've gotten paid on a wholesale deal was $75,000. That was a good day. That day's hard to replicate. I'm still working on, I'm still working on that one, right? Um, but, but, but you pay someone, so someone paid me to do their job for them. And they paid me a pretty, pretty penny, and you paid someone else a pretty penny. In fact, um, Brandon in here, I'm about to pay him a $10,000 wholesale fee because he did the marketing and found a deal for me that I want. Guys, if you are a real estate investor and you're actively doing deals, whether you are doing your own marketing or not, Believe me, you are paying for your marketing and you are paying a premium 
for that marketing to the tune of $16,500 or $5,000. For some of you guys, $16,000, man, that might be your whole marketing budget for an entire year or more that you just paid somebody else for one deal, for one deal. And, and for, a, for a wholesaler, like they get the best profit in the world. What kind of profit does a wholesaler get? Oh, the risk-free profit, risk-free profit. It's my favorite profit to get as a real estate investor. And then what, what kind of profit are you gonna get? You'll make about 48,000, but you, you're taking the risk full profit. So you're coming up with the money to purchase the property, right? You're, you're rehabbing the property and taking all of the risks that are associated with that. And then you're taking the market risk that something might change in the market while you're actually renovating the property, right? So you get the risk, congratulations, you got the risk full profit. But you know what, you said something inter interesting. You said you're gonna make about $48,000 on this deal. So, you know, for me, as a real estate investor, Guys, bring me deals, right? This is, this is marketing here, okay? I'm, you know, if you've got a deal, I want it, right? Um, but, but for me, I don't care what you make as a wholesaler. In fact, I want you to make a lot of money as a wholesaler. Why? Because I want you to bring me another deal after we're done, okay? Does that make sense? I will pay, I will use my formula, I will do my math, I will do my research, analysis, and due diligence. And by the way, that's something you guys all promised me that you would do when you came in tonight and when you signed my electronic disclaimer that said, disclaimer, it said, you're responsible for your own analysis and due diligence. Guys, you will meet people here at this Real Estate Investor Club tonight. Some of them I know, love, and trust that you will do deals with, and some people that I do not know whether it's someone that I know, love, and trust, or whether it's someone I don't know or you don't know, you guys are responsible for your own analysis and due diligence as a real estate investor. Everyone agree? Well, too good, because you already said you'd agree on that form up there, so I don't wanna get any crying calls. Is that okay? Good. So, so, so marketing. Um, let's go through some of the things you guys need to know as, uh, as, as a marketer. Number one, not, you know, actually it says number one, not doing enough of it. Number one is really not doing any, right? Not doing any. And all you're doing is you're paying someone else to go and do that marketing for you and you're paying them a premium above what it would cost you to generate your own lead and to generate your own deal. About how much does it cost to generate a lead in today's market? Two hundred dollars? Who said that? Who said two hundred dollars? Uh, you know, when we first got started, it was under a hundred, and, and so that was two thousand three, and um, it's gotten more and more expensive, um, and and normally things get like cheaper, right? So, so, um, so, so now it's costing us over two hundred dollars to generate a lead, over two hundred dollars to generate a lead, a lead. We'll, we'll get to the deal, we'll get to the math. Don't you worry, yeah, we'll get there. I know where you're going, that's good, yeah. Good, 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 well, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna let you down, I promise. Um, so, so let's say that it takes you 10 leads. Screw it, let's say it takes you 20 leads before you get a deal. By my math, that's four grand, okay? You're still saving $1,000 off what he says is a wholesale fee, $5,000, and you're still saving, saving what he just paid as a wholesale fee, $16,500, right? So you, so you just kept $12,500 in your pocket. Would that feel better? Yes. I think the general consensus on that is yes, right? But, but if it fits your numbers and you're still making money, and you like the, and, and, and your risk tolerance is still in line, you do, and me, I would too. I, 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 buy, I buy from wholesalers whenever the numbers are right, whenever the numbers are right. And, um, but I want you guys first to be doing your own marketing. And marketing's kind of a scary thing to do, um, but, but paying somebody $16,500 might snap you into wanting to learn a lot more about marketing, yes? 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 I thank you. Yeah, good. Okay, so so for those for so so number zero, right, is not doing any, right? Number one is not doing enough of it. Number two is not doing it consistently. 
And number three, number this is number two. I'm off. I you know. And and B <laughs> is uh, <clears throat> is is not hitting them continually, right? There is one investor in town who has sent me the same marketing piece for the last eight years, and he sends me this marketing piece because. I own rental property, right? And landlords are a great group of people to, to mail to because landlords burn out, right? Because some things they don't plan for and if they're not saving their cash flow, sometimes they don't have the money set aside to make those repairs that are necessary to re-rent the property, right? So this guy has been marketing, and I, and I, and I know he's a good marketer uh, because he has wholesaled me some properties, right? So I know his marketing works. It doesn't work, mark, work with me because I want to hold between all these different market cycles, right? But he consistently sends me a letter on each of my properties two or three times a year. Because I have this little um, swipe file. So guys, I, I take all your marketing that you send to, to landlords. I get it all and I just put it on my little box and I keep it aside. My swipe file is this little box. And, and as I was looking at the little box today, it's like the top doesn't fit on very well because it has so many letters from this guy from sending me all these marketing pieces over the last several years. It's the same letter every single time. Do you think he does that? You get that one too. It's Techstar. Is it from Techstar? I don't know. With the cowboy on it? No. No, okay. You get the cowboy one, yes, 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 yes. So it's this uh, tech stars. He, the, their logo is this, is this guy who, who's uh, the, he's, he's a cow, he's a cowboy. But um, do you think he does that over and over and over again because his marketing does not work? He does it because it works and it works really well. But sometimes it doesn't work every single time. But consistently doing it, like you know the cowboy guy. And I know the cowboy guy because he is the one that you would probably call if you had to sell your house because he's the one who's always marketing to you. So you've got to do it over and over again. You also have to use the right wording. What's the right wording to, to get a motivated seller to call you? Fast and easy. Fast, easy. What else? Cash. Cash is as is. As is. That works really well. What else works? No realtor fees. Okay, what else? What else works? Uh, has anybody in here ever stopped a foreclosure? Yes, yeah, stop foreclosure works really well. Fast, cash, stop foreclosure. That message really resonates for someone who needs fast cash and needs to stop a foreclosure. And are those some of our best motivated buyers? I'm um, excuse, excuse me, motivated sellers? Yes, because sometimes they got to sell their house by tomorrow or now would be good too, right? So, so those are the sellers that you want to get your message, that message in front of. Uh, not split testing your marketing to, uh, to, to see what works and what doesn't work. Um, um, one of my colleagues um, recently did a, a, test, uh, a test letter and um, they were sending to the probate list, and one of the things that they included on their test letter was, um, I'm sorry for your loss. That sounds nice, right? Sounds nice. I'm sorry for your loss. So they took their traditional letter that didn't say, you know, I'm, 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 I'm sending you an email because somebody you know and love died, right? It's just, it's just a general, like, hey, I want to buy your house. Now they're sending you a letter because, well, somebody you know and you love died, right? And you're making it clear, and you, but you're sorry about it. Sorry about that. That sucks for you. How do you think that letter went off? Regular letter, want to buy your house, versus I'm sorry for your, for your loss and I want to buy your house. Better, better results out of I'm sorry for your loss? Well, who else thinks that? Which one gets better results? You're sorry for your loss? Who else? Who else? The, the non, did you say the non-stalker? <laughs> you look great in black. I saw you at the gravesite. Please, <laughs> please call me. You're a friend. You have to sign an interested party. Interested party. 
Um, so, so the result was they got more calls for the sorry for your loss, but they were more pissed off calls. Yeah, they were more pissed off calls. Did it still work out? No. No? No, it did not. I get a lot of pissed off calls too. Thank God I have an answering service. Otherwise, like, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, if, if, you're, if you are not a real estate investor until somebody calls you pissed off that you wrote them a letter, okay? You just can't check off I'm a real estate investor until that happens. And it's got to happen a lot. And it will happen a lot if you're actively doing marketing. I mean, that's just, that's just how it is. But uh, this got um, more angry calls and less conversions, right? Because it, you know, it's like you know, I, you know, I, I just buried my dad. I'm, you know, I'm that I'm, ang you know, and you called me because I just buried, and I don't like that. Um, and people got upset with them. So, but but luckily they tracked their numbers on their original marketing piece. They tracked their numbers on their new marketing piece, and they did their business by the numbers. So they changed back to the old marketing piece that was more successful. Uh, you got to track where your leads come from and how much they cost. I told you guys, and Phil probably told you too, there's no silver bullet in this business, right? You're going to be doing multiple marketing strategies as a real estate investor. So every time that a lead calls you, you need to ask them, where would you get my information from? Because whatever's working, what do you want to do? More, more of that thing that's working the best, right? But I will say... Um, I, I, I will say this, uh, don't just do one thing exclusively. So one of the things that Elaine asked, who has decided that she could not put up with me anymore, um, one of the things that she asked is, is um, um, you know, wh what can I be doing in this market? And I said, yes, right? So that annoyed her, number one. Or that, no, I way past annoyed her by that point. But, but so I'd said, so I'd said, yes. So, um, you know, and I'll say the same thing about marketing. You can't just do one thing. And, and the analogy that I'll give you, and this is going to sound maybe a little too frou-frou, but guys, a good garden is a garden that provides you food or beauty all year long, right? And you can't just plant one plant and have that happen for you all year long. In the same way, you can't just use one marketing technique and expect that to perform for you every single month in and out. Just like a good garden has multiple different vegetables, plants, flowers, et cetera in there, a good marketing technique will use, or a good marketing strategy will use multiple different strategies that are producing for you throughout the year. And there are some times where it's better to market to non-owner occupants, and there are some times when it's worse to market to non-owner occupants. Now it's not a bad time to market to non-owner occupants because everyone's furious, the landlords are furious because they're looking at their tax bill and they're saying, well, this is going to be going up, right? And this is going to hurt my cash flow. Another great time to market to landlords is when they actually get their bill, which is roughly around October 15th through October 21st, and that bill is due, is, is late after January 31st of the following year. So it's late after January 31st of 2016. That's when a lot of the landlords who did not do an escrow on their loan are going to be paying these property taxes, and that's when pain, that's when it hurts, right? Because your property values probably went up $50,000 over the last three years, and at a rate of 2.2% uh, uh, percentage of value for your property taxes, well, that's an extra 1000 or 1500 or, or maybe more, depending on when you actually... Uh, or how much your property is actually appreciated. So appreciation is kind of a double-edged sword, but um, over time it certainly works out. And then another great time to market to non-owner occupants is, is the summer months, because that's when your tenant properties are turning over, and that's when you've got to do a make ready, et cetera. Guys, um, if you're not going to answer your phone because you're busy at work, that's a fail. I mean, that's an all-out fail, guys. Don't do marketing and not answer your phone. I mean, you're just wasting your money because a lot of times sellers will not leave messages, and when you try and call them back, they're not going to answer your, your, your call because you're an unrecognized number, and a motivated seller thinks an unrecognized number is a bill collector. So you're done, right? You're done. So you just took the $200 that I said it takes you to generate a lead, and you just lit that, those two suckers on fire.
I did a presentation in Dallas uh, last week, and I did an example um, uh, with, with a $100 bill. And I had hired a magician's assistant for me, uh, and they were in the front row, and they looked pretty good. So I'd asked this woman, I'd asked this woman to be my magician's assistant. And um, I should have asked her for her qualifications first, because someone in the audience, so I'll, I'll ask, does anybody in this audience smoke? Any smokers? No smokers? No smokers. Yeah, you like, you're like, you know, yeah, no, I see what you're doing, yeah. Um, so he's an electronic cigarette guy. Um, but, but so there was one person in the audience who had a lighter. Yeah, one person, which is cool, which I think is awesome. But I wish that person did not show up that night because my magician's assistant who was holding that $100 bill allowed me to light that $100 bill on fire. Yes, yeah, that happened. Uh, and then so, I, and, and, and it wasn't my $100 bill, so one of the things I did is, because uh, I'm not going to risk any of my money, you know. <laughs> um, I'd ask someone in the audience, you know, who has a, who has a, a crisp, clean $100 bill, and they, they gave me one. And then, and it, and, and it wasn't, so, so, and I've done this a couple of times before, so, so the way that I do it is I ask for the $100 bill, right? And everyone's like, I think she's probably good for it, so I'll, you know, I'll, you know, I'll, uh, you know, I know where she talks. Like, oh, I, I think, I think I'm, a, I think I'm safe. So again, and it's, and it's always someone who's never like, you know, seen me present before. So, so I get, a, get got, I got this hundred dollar bill, and then I ask for the lighter. So that's when the sweat starts, you know, starts dripping, you know, down, down, and, and then she wants to confirm that I am who I, and she starts to ask for a little more backup. But um, what I said was, um, you know, a lot of you guys, um, if you don't have an answering service, right, you let that go to voicemail. And sometimes you get one, sometimes you don't. And if, if, you, if you do pick it up, okay, if you do pick it up, and if you hang up, guys, if you do any marketing at all, if you do any marketing at all, which I said you have to, right, like don't come back next month if you haven't started some marketing. Is that fair? Okay, so like two of you will come back. I think it's basically what you told me. But marketing, marketing is what I want you guys to be doing, right? So, so um, basically what I said is every time you get a call from, from your marketing, every time you get a call from your marketing, you guys prom make, a pro make a promise to me tonight, okay? Yes? Yes. 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 I'm not going to, no, there's, no, there's no burning in here. Like we're going to get incendiary in here, but we're not going to burn any, any more money because I already had that experience. So every time you get a call, Promise me you will reach into your wallet. You always keep a $100 bill in your wallet, okay? Promise me that you will reach into that wallet and pull out that $100 bill. Yes? yes. And if you have two, pull out two of them, okay? Because it's really going to cost you about $200 to generate a lead. Pull out that $200 bill. If you get off the phone with that seller, and if you say to yourself, there's no deal here, if you say to yourself, there's no deal here, Go find that smoker, go borrow his or her lighter, and go light that $200 on fire. Yeah? Fair? Right? Fair? Yes? You're looking at me like, I'm not going to do what she said. I'm not going to do it. What do you think you are doing when you don't answer your phone? What do you think you are doing when you hang up with someone because you don't have a strategy that you can use to help that person? Guys. Let's face it, you're burning money, $200 a bill, $200 a call at a time. Yes? Do you think you might take this strategy thing maybe a little bit more seriously if you did that? Because there's something that happens where we disassociate the money that we spend on our marketing with that dollar per lead as it comes in the door. Now, if I would have burned a $100 bill tonight, I, you guys would have all remembered it. Yes? Yes? Because the people in Dallas, well, they will never forget it, OK? <laughs> but if I have to burn some money for you guys to get you guys to do this, I will. That's how important it is. And that's the association that you guys need to have in your head as you market as a real estate investor. Yes? She will give me a hundred dollar bill, okay? Oh, it's a twenty. <laughs> all right. So yeah. So back to Mr. Miyagi, which I know you were all just like hanging on the Mr. Miyagi thing. 
Um, Mr. Miyagi made the Karate Kid like wax all of his like antique cars, right? So wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. You guys need to let me be Mrs. Miyagi for you, right? And tell you, go wax on and go wax off. Go practice this. Because guys, by the time you get that call, and then you pull out that, those two $100 bills out of your pocket, just like we agreed, right? We all agreed to that, yes? Yes? OK, some of you guys I can tell are like, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that was an hour ago now. I mean, you know. So as you're bringing those things out, do you want to be practicing for the first time knowing that you've got to burn two $100 bills if you screw this thing up? No. You want to Mr. Miyagi, right? You want to wax on, wax off, and practice these things so by the time that you really get going on it, you get that real call where you can make real money, you know what to say and you know how to say it, right? Um, not joining the Real Estate Investor Clubs uh, to get the breath. Did, did you guys learn some stuff here? 